Hi friends, welcome on board for another project. This is an AC energy measurement circuit. It means it can measure the AC voltage RMS, current consumption RMS, real power, power factor, and also the energy consumption of the load or kilowatt hour. And it shows all of these parameters on this small OLED display. So as usual, I designed a schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and shared the PCB with my friends using Altium 365. Also sent the gearbox to PCB way and as you can see, the fabrication quality is just pretty nice. If you remember, I had published another version of this circuit in the past using an Arduino board. However, this design is more compact and professional and it's, it looks like a final product. Let me explain the board just briefly. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. Here is the AC input, and this is the output to the load. This part of the board is to make all of the measurements, and this chip makes the measurements and send the data through this optocoupler to this side of the board. So this optocoupler provides a galvanic isolation between this part and this part because the power supply for this part and this part are not identical. This is the power supply, non-isolated power, su power supply for this section of the board and this is the isolated power supply for this section. Provides power for this SDM32 and this regulator, 3.3 volts regulator and also the display. These four push buttons, okay, these four push buttons are to calibrate the board. However, because I used some 1% tolerance resistors for the input, the calibration is not that much necessary. However, I have provided you this option anyway. So nothing very much remains on the top side. Uh, as you see, the input is protected. This is the fuse and this is a mov and this capacitor is for noise reduction. And this capacitor is for the capacitor-based supply for this side because the current consumption of this side is just 5 milliamps or so. This is the back side. Nothing special on the back side except for these passive components. And you can see the isolation gaps and creepage areas to follow the IPC uh, and clearance for a high voltage. The, uh, if the camera get focused, okay. The power rating of the shunt resistor is six watts at the moment because each resistor is rated at three watts. You can increase the power rating to 12 watts if you use four shunt resistors in parallel. So it makes the shunt more resistor, more uh, stable because it generates less heat for high currents and as much as the shunt is stable, your measurement is more accurate. I think it's enough for this section. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. All right, here is the home page of Altium Designer where you have access to all of these nice tutorials. If you don't have the Altium on your computer, just follow this link in my YouTube video description and activate your free legal license. Using that license allows you to use the latest version of the software with all of the features that of course includes Altium 365. So just don't forget that and avoid any crack version or anything because all of them are infected with viruses and trojans. Here is the schematic and in this project I have built a hierarchical order of the schematic. So one document is on the top and the rest are below that the top document. So this is the main document and all of these files, these four files comes below. Here is the input, power supply and this is the measurement chip and this document belongs to the microcontroller. As you know, with each project, I also publish an article so you can read more about the 
schematic in the article. However, before I go to the PCB, let's check the specifications of this microcontroller, this part number in the Octopart website, STM32G030F6. So, STM32G030F6. So the first one is nice, it's from STM Microelectronics. So it says the frequency is up to 64 megahertz, flash memory 32 kilobytes. And all of the necessary data and the RAM size is 8 kilobytes. So as you see, it puts all of the necessary information quickly in front of your eyes before wasting your time in the data sheet. And also, this website allows you to build the bill of materials for free. So just don't forget that because all of the features and services of this website is free. Here is the PCB layout. So as you can see, it's a two layers PCB board. The red is the top layer and blue, this one is the bottom layer. Let's check the board size here from the properties menu. Board size, horizontal size is 16 millimeters and vertical size is 93 millimeters. So it's a compact board and you can embed this PCB in many enclosures you have. Let's check the design. Here is the input fuse, value store, this capacitor for noise reduction, common mode choke, capacitor based power supply comes through here and provides the supply for this chip and this chip makes the measurements and sends the data to this optocoupler. So there is a galvanic isolation and you can see the creepage area, okay? Because these two parts, this part and this part are galvanically isolated. And here is the STM32 microcontroller to make the rest of the calculations. And these are the push buttons uh, to calibrate the board. And this is the connector for the LCD. This is, these two MOSFETs are for a voltage level conversion for the LCD because LCD works with, uh, is, LCD is like a module and it works with five volts. So I have to convert the 3.3 voltage of the microcontroller to five volts and the protocol is I2C. These components are for noise reduction. Actually, it is a Pi filter, CLC, or I can call it Pi. This is a 3.3 uh, volt linear regulator. Nothing very much remains on the top. I told you about the clearance area. You can see here is the AC input and I have uh, implemented these uh, clearances here to follow the IPC. Let's go to the back side. Here is the back side almost a solid ground except for these tracks. The same for here. Let's go to 3D. There we go. Here is the 3D view. Uh, here is the shunt resistor and on the back side. If you want to use, as I told you in the beginning, if you want to use four shunt resistors, you increase the power rating of the shunt to 12 watts, much better for high current measurements. And these are some passive components, nothing very much. I think I covered most of the points. Let's go to the testing section and I will show you how we can calibrate and use the board. It's pretty easy. All right, welcome to the testing section. As you can see, I have connected the circuit to the mains input. Here is the load and the display shows the initial readings and measurement before calibration. I have selected a heating element of a soldering iron as a load. But why? Because it is a resistive load and a resistive load does not cause a phase shift between voltage and current. In theory, the power factor of such a load is around 1. However, in practice, you will measure the power factor in around 0.95 to 0.98.
So we don't live in a perfect world and this is not a perfect resistive load. So I have a benchtop multimeter. It can measure the RMS readings accurately and I will uh, calibrate the voltage and current using this benchtop multimeter. I have measured the current consumption of this load separately because there is no space here to show you and it was around 0.14 amps. However, here it says 0.17 amps. So for the first step, let me reduce the oh, let me reduce the current and this is fine. 0.14 amps is the real uh, current consumption of this load in RMS. The voltage says uh, 221. So let's see how much is it using my multimeter. It says 221. So it's fine. It's uh, actually it is fluctuating and the voltage reading is fine and it does not need any calibration. And as I told you, that's because I used 1% tolerance uh, resistors. So the actual power rating of this load is around 30 watts, which, ma which uh, matches with the specifications of the manufacturer because it claims that the power rating of this heating element is around 30 watts. So 29.88 watts is the power rating of this load. So as simple as that, just build the circuit and have fun and measure all of the loads and even if you like, you can uh, remove any of these parameters and put kilowatt hour and so or so in the display. And I have used big fonts for the display to be more visible. I hope you, li you liked this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up like this. See you in the next video.